Um, hello and welcome to my talk. Um, I'm the research uh, associate at the chair of aerodynamics and fluid mechanics at, at the Technical University of Munich. And today I try to explain why an airplane can actually fly. So what carries the airplane? Um, a nice picture, okay. Um, so uh, I try to explain the aerodynamics in 15 minutes by using three formulas, but today I have a special offer for you by using only one formula. Um, let's try this. First of all, I'd like to explain which forces are acting on the aircraft. Here you see a pretty realistic um, uh, picture of the aircraft, and um, of course there's some gravity which tries to pull the airplane to the earth. So we need another force which should uh, carry this airplane. This is the lift force, which acts upwards and um, can overcome the gravity. But uh, when the airplane is moving through the air, there appears some drag. So the drag force tries to pull um, the airplane uh, backwards, and we need some another force which can overcome this drag, and this is the thrust produced by the engines of the airplane. So we have our four forces acting on the aircraft, but I heard about another four important forces acting on the aircraft. Um, these are the dreams of the engineers trying to get the airplane fly. The reality tries to prevent uh, them from, from doing this. The real villain here is uh, the regulating authority, and if uh, there's enough money, uh, then every pro problem can be solved and the airplane um, can fly. So before I um, explain the lift force, I have to introduce some basic concepts um, in order to make it uh, easier for you to uh, follow my explanation. Um, again, we go back to our airplane and um, this a really simple concept which can um, explain almost um, every effect of aerodynamics. So we have only uh, to look at the cross section of the wing. So let's cut through the wing and um, here you see the cross section of the wing. We call it airfoil. And um, the other important concept uh, which uh, should be understood is um, it doesn't matter whether the airfoil is flowing through the air or the airfoil is standing and the free stream is just blowing over the airfoil. So we have our free stream and we can define some angle. This is the angle between the free stream direction and the mid court of the airfoil, and we call it angle of attack. So pretty easy, actually. Another concept we have to understand are the streamlines. These are just uh, the tracks of the air particles which are flowing along the airfoil, and we can depict it like this. So again, pretty easy. Um, the third but really important concept for our explanation is the Bernoulli law. Maybe a lot of you learned this in the school. And uh, here you see a pipe with a varying cross-section. It uh, has a really big cross-section at the beginning at, uh, and uh, at the end, and a narrow part in the middle of the pipe. So you can imagine when the um, water or some fluid is going through this um, pipe, it is accelerating in the middle because the same volume has to pass through the narrower um, cross-section, so the velocity increases actually in the middle. And the Bernoulli law tells us that when velocity is uh, getting higher, the pressure is getting lower. It's pretty easy. And um, in the second part of the uh, pipe, the uh, velocity of the fluid is getting lower, so the pressure is getting higher. As simple as that. So now we have all the tools to understand the lift force. We go back to our airfoil. You see these um, tracks of the air particles. And um, here we have two particles, which are starting at the um, leading part of the airfoil. And then they want to go to the backward part of the airfoil. Of course, everybody would agree. Um, so, uh, you can believe me that the upper surface is longer than the bottom surface. Um, it's, it can be measured, and uh, it's actually true. So, the upper air particle has to carry up to meet the bottom one. Again, it's easy to understand. 
Um, so the velocity at the upper surface is higher, um, and Bernoulli law tells us that the pressure is lower. Again, it's pretty simple. Now we get some pressure difference between the upper and the bottom surface, which generates some lift. I can um, show you my palms, and if I'm pushing with the upper palm a little bit weaker uh, towards the bottom one, uh, then some overall force tries to uh, put my palms higher, so the lift appears. A really simple explanation of lift. So now we are actually done, but wait, so let's be um, real scientists and question this theory. Um, here we have a really simple airfoil. This is a plate, just a simple plate. We have some free stream. What do you think? Uh, would this airfoil produce some lift or not? Anybody? So everybody agrees. And we, if we put this airfoil um, into a wind tunnel, or if we are carrying out some experiments, we would uh, really experience um, what you just uh, answered. We would, uh, we, we would actually get no lift generation there, so we wouldn't measure any force at this plate. But let's rotate it um, a little bit. What about this situation? So we increase the angle of attack. What do you think? Would we get some lift or not, according to our theory? So, do we have some brave scientists here who would? <laughs> okay, so I can tell you, if we carry out this experiment, we would get actually lift. So our theory is starting to get some cracks. Um, it is it isn't predicted by our theory. Uh, so the airfoil is, is not so bad, actually. So we can build an airplane by using this airfoil. But what about this super airfoil? Now we increase the upper surface. The bottom surface is pretty short. It's great. So it would produce a lot of lift. What do you think? Um, yeah, um, I hear uh, some voices of engineers. But um, actually, our theory would... Uh, predict some lift, but you're right, it would only uh, generate some drag and no lift at all. So the airfoil is bad. So um, our theory is simply wrong. What's wrong uh, in this theory? The air particles don't have to meet. That's what I claimed, but it isn't true. And in general, Bernoulli law can be applied to several streamlines. Uh, that's what we tried a couple of slides ago. So uh, this theory is pretty prevailing, but um, it isn't true, and that's, um, um, that's what I don't like, that's why I talk to you today. Um, but don't worry, we need only one equation which can explain everything. We just have to understand this equation to solve it, and we would know everything about the flow over an airfoil. And this equation looks just like this. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit complicated, I agree. Um, it's so complicated, you can get one million dollars only for a proof that there exist some unique solutions of this equation. So you don't have to provide a solution, actually, you just have to prove there are some solutions. So mathematicians are crazy people, they give one million dollars for a proof of there exist some solutions. Uh, but um, no problem, we actually solve this equation in an approximate way, we use computers, in order to solve uh, these equations, but uh, it's important to understand we get an appro approximate solution. Uh, it's okay for us as engineers and scientists, and uh, better our computer should look like this. This is the supercomputer uh, which is located to the north of Munich, and we're using it to solve actually these equations. Um, as you see, it isn't actually as simple as the first explanation, but I tried to give you an idea about the lift generation by a simple concept. Um, we can look into a flow. Here you see again the streamlines, and they are curved. So we have uh, some curved uh, flow. And uh, these air particles, which are moving along the streamlines, experience some um, force. This is the centrifugal force. And it um, acts like this. This is the same force. I have my keys here. So if I rotate my keys, you see these uh, keys are pulled outward of my hand. This is actually the same force which st uh, strains this stripe. 
So it's an easy concept and maybe it helps us to explain the lift generation. Um, what I did, I solved the equations you just um, have seen and um, I tried to look into the whole picture. Let's do it together. Here you see a picture of a, um, an airfoil. I just used a, a symmetric airfoil for the sake of simplicity. So the upper surface and the bottom surface have the same length. And you see some beautiful colors. It's actually the same situation as with the weather forecast. The um, blue color um, denotes the lower pressure and the red color or green color denotes some uh, higher pressure. As you see, um, our streamlines are actually curved because they try to follow um, the airfoil. They're curved here, so they there, because of this um, um, curvature, appears a force. And these forces, they are acting outwards of the airfoil, and they produce these regions of lower pressure on the upper and on the bottom side of the airfoil. But because our airfoil is uh, symmetric and we don't have any angle of attack, uh, these forces are equal, and the airfoil is in equilibrium and uh, doesn't produce any lift in this situation. But uh, let's look into um, a graph. So we are re real scientists. We want to uh, make a beautiful graph. So we put our angle of attack. It's zero. And our lift is also zero. But let's increase the angle of attack. So now we have an angle of attack of five uh, degrees. And as you see, the curvature of the streamlines isn't um, um, the same anymore. The curvature is here higher at the upper side than at the bottom side. Because of this curvature, um, um, region of lower pressure occurs only on the um, upper side. That's why um, this region produces some force which is acting upwards. So we are starting to get some lift in this situation, as you hear. As you see here, we go to our beautiful graph, we put some new uh, data point, five degrees, and some lift occurs. Okay, let's increase the angle of attack again. Now, you see it, um, certainly the streamlines here are uh, getting much more uh, curvature than at this side, and the region of lower pressure is getting bigger. This uh, causes uh, the lift uh, to increase. So we get, we get uh, even more lift here, and here we have our new data point, and as you see, it's a pretty nice uh, dependency. It's a linear dependency. What does it mean? If we double the angle of attack, the lift doubles as well. It's pretty easy. But let's um, increase the angle of attack again. We are greedy. Now we see some limit. Um, because the angle of attack is too high, the air can't fo uh, follow the airfoil anymore at this side. So here appears some region, we call it separation bubble. Here the air is just recirculating over and over again, and this bubble disturbs actually the whole flow over the airfoil, and our lift is um, getting lower, unfortunately. Um, so let's... Um, the, the lift is um, actually lower here. So let's look into our graph. Another data point, and now the lift is getting lower. Now we try some really high angle of attack. Here you see the separation bubble is really huge. Uh, that's why uh, this airfoil produces only a tiny amount of lift, and we can't use this airfoil anymore by such a high angle of attack. It's pretty difficult. And uh, this situation um, is pretty dangerous. Um, we call it a stall. And the stall can be compared to the wheel of a car, uh, which loses um, contact to the street. Uh, if it's raining or it is icy out there, so the driver of the car can uh, steer the wheel um, as intense as he wants, but the vehicle wouldn't respond to his um, um, steering, and uh, the car is driving uh, however it wants. The same appears here. 
we get our new data points, so the lift is pretty low. Uh, now um, we are designing some aircraft. So the, uh, what we are interested in is this region, actually this green region, where the lift is linear. So we are trying to use the airplane um, with such uh, flow around the airfoil. Uh, and this region is pretty dangerous for the civil aircraft, but this region can be used by uh, military aircraft, for example. Fighter jets um, are flying um, also at uh, higher angle, uh, angles of attack, like the, here. Now, um, I hope you have a little bit more clue about um, uh, lift generation. And uh, here, a small, uh, brief conclusion. So Bernoulli law is great, but unfortunately it can be used for the explanation of the lift force. In general, it is valid only for one single streamline. Lift can be explained by the curvature of the streamlines, centrifugal force. Lift depends on the angle of attack, and in our nice region, it's a linear dependency. And once the angle of attack is too high, the stall occurs. So this dangerous situation we don't like. And uh, especially this effect constrains the lift force generation. So there are always some limits in our lives. Um, thank you for your attention. That's all. Thank you very much, Vlad. Um, any questions to Vlad? I want to ask you about the attack angle of 10 degrees. The, is the, the carbon is provided. Okay. Just a moment. Uh, uh, 10, 10 degrees. Yes. Angle. So why, why the, the upper, upper side, the color is divided in four, four colors? A strong blue and oh, a big uh, <laughs> blue. Uh, it was just a um, uh, coincidence, actually. So I've, I've chosen only 20 colors in order to depict the whole situation here. And um, yeah, I could have taken much more colors. Uh, but it doesn't... Uh, no meaning, actually. I have, it appeared uh, nicer. <laughs> Hi, my name is Alex. Um, my question is, how does it work in other direction when it's not lifting, but like if you um, turn turn it other way around, does it work? It's a great uh, question. Um, Thanks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it works exactly in the same way. You can just turn the picture and you will get uh, the opposite situation. So there are some airplanes, they can uh, fly uh, another way around. So um, it works pretty well. Um, uh, hey, I have a following question. I quite often I used to observe birds and uh, I have come to the following conclusion that they do fly in a completely different way considering the airplanes and to be precise they wave with their wings. Why don't the engineers construct their airplanes so that they wave with their wings? Okay, it's a, <laughs> a great question. Um, actually, uh, as engineers we can do it much easier, we can use some engines. And birds, unfortunately, don't have any engines at the wings, so they have to wave uh, in order to produce some uh, force um, forward, which push, pushes them forward. And we can just use um, engines for it, or propellers. Thank you. Any other questions? About this huge equation, actually, uh, it was solved approximately. But what was the meaning of like what what, what did the, the solution? Uh, um, what is the meaning of the solution? It's it's a, again a really great question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so actually, these equations um, are just uh, uh, laws of Newton. Everybody. Uh, know this um, 
laws, they describe the con conservation of mass, momentum, and energy. So nothing else, it's pretty easy. So the, the, the concept is easy, but the solution or the way to solve this equation is pretty hard. So the math behind this equation is hard, but the physics is pretty easy. It just, okay, the, the mass uh, can't actually disappear. So if we put uh, one liter of um, fluids in a pipe, we get one liter again. This is the first equation. These three equations are um, the conservation of momentum, so the, the law of uh, Newton. And the third equation is just the conservation of energy. So the energy uh, or the heat is uh, flowing uh, from the uh, hotter region to, to the colder one. That's what this equation actually explains. But the math again, the mass, uh, the mathematics is ugly. And how, how uh, did, the, did the solution help the engineering? Uh, do you mean this solution, you, you can get one million of uh, US dollars? Yeah, the, the solution that was found uh, in this huge uh, super... Ah, um, yeah, so we, we don't have to carry out any experiments anymore. So if, if I want to know the lift of this airfoil I just showed you, I just have to carry out some simulation uh, by means of a computer, and I don't have to go to the uh, wind tunnel, don't, I don't get any uh, dirty hands, so it's better. Uh, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by there's no unique solution to that? Um, is there, is, is, does that mean that for a given uh, force value there can be many? Yeah, that's right. Point? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there are some simple setups, yeah. for example, a pipe or uh, something simple. Mm -hmm. There you can find a solution just by, by the hand. It's pretty easy. But there are really complicated regimes of uh, flowing uh, or, or of the flow. And uh, in these regions, uh, nobody knows what what's actually happens. It, it is an unsolved problem. So the physicists are fighting against these equations and are trying to, to get more um, um, insight, but it's pretty difficult. Okay, so it's known that it does not have a unique solution, uh, but no one knows the reason why it does, why it does not have a unique solution. Yeah, th that's right. It's, uh, these equations are really non-linear, they're really complex, so some chaos occurs there, and uh, nobody knows whether you... It's a coincidence that you get especially this solution or this solution, um, it, it depends on everything, so... Okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> thank you very much, Vlad. Please feel free... Thank you very much for your talk. Please feel free to approach Vlad uh, with your questions during the coffee break. Thank you again. Thank you.